Hello and welcome to another inside look at the Aesop family. My name is Weldon Trantham and I will be your host on this journey. In today's video, I'm going rogue. Now, what I mean by going rogue is I'm not necessarily stepping away from Ace Up or anything like that or, you know, running away. I'm just going to talk about a couple of subject matters that are more my personal opinion rather than the collective opinion of Ace Up or uh, other paranormal groups that I may be associated with. Now, see, with ASAP, I am the tech supervisor, so I'm over all of our equipment, the equipment that we bring in, the equipment that we use, and looking for new equipment to bring in for us to use to test out. <clears throat> and to be honest, I've been seeing some equipment out there that uh, paranormal groups have been using to investigate, and... Again, this is my opinion, not necessarily the opinion of, you know, uh, ASUP or other paranormal groups that we may be associated with. But some of the equipment out there, I, I feel like my whole thought process with it is that Doing paranormal investigations is more for scientific research, okay? So, some of the equipment that we used are definitely more tied with scientific, um, with helping us explain situations scientifically, such as uh, EM EMF detector. Now, an EMF detector does read electromagnetic fields, and even though there is no solid, hardcore proof that entities or ghosts have electromagnetic fields, it is a theory among paranormal investigators that entities have some sort of electromagnetic field that they put off. And when we do investigations, we do a sweep through the entire place with these EMF detectors to find and see if there's any high spots, low spots. Most of the time, EMF is supposed to be 0.0. .0. So when you're walking in the middle of a hall that you've already done a sweep through before and had absolutely no reading, and now you're getting a 1.4 or 7.6, whatever the reading is, it kind of makes you question what is causing that EMF to, to rise like that. And that is one of the things that we use to, to suggest that there may be a ghost or an entity present. Okay. Other stuff we use, thermal cameras. Yes, they pick up cold, hot spots. It is believed that, you know, some entities will put off a cold spot, some entities will put off a hot spot, and that camera will pick up on that. So, both of these devices have some sort of scientific backing with them as far as what they can be used for and everything else. <clears throat> now, some of the equipment that I'm starting to see be used a lot more during investigation are things like spirit box. Now, I do think the spirit box is something interesting. However, I do believe that it puts a lot of it on to the individual as interpretation. So what a spirit box does is it changes station like on radio waves. It, it, goes through stations so fast, like turning a dial, just really, really fast. And it scans through these, these stations so fast and these frequencies so fast that theory is that 
one solid word or sentence should not be able to come through. So basically they're using the white noise, searching through the white noise for words, sentences, or other phrases. To me, that leaves it up to the person operating the spirit box, their interpretation of it. So is there any scientific back, backing to it? No, it, it's more of a, it's more of an interpretation of what you hear. So for spirit box, it's kind of hard for me to say that, yes, absolutely. It's, you know, 100% proof that there's an entity or a ghost nearby because they were able to say words through this, this white noise. Now, I'm not saying that it doesn't necessarily make an investigation more interesting because anytime you have any sort of hit on any of your devices, it come, it makes things interesting and more prevalent to, it makes the investigation more interesting and people are more likely to stay tuned in or interested in the whole investigation. Um, another device, a computerized device that has words stored within it, and it supposedly uses the environment sensors that are built into the box to determine words that come out of the box. Another explanation I was told is that Entities are able to get into this box and manipulate it to choose words that they want to appear on the box. Again, interesting. I don't think there's a whole lot of science background to it to actually say, yes, this is proof or evidence that an entity exists or a ghost exists. Then again, does it make the uh, investigation more interesting when you have a box that's talking to you? Absolutely. When you have something saying words, especially when those words are um, meaningful to the investigation, it, it makes everything a lot more interesting. So it's a device. Yes, I, I'd, I'd use it on an investigation, but I wouldn't put any stock or real value into hits or notification coming off of it simply for that reason. Uh, another device that you're seeing more and more of on investigations on, um, you know, whether it's paranormal teams that are on TV, uh, on YouTube, they like to use something called an SLS camera, which essentially what an SLS camera is, is a camera off an old Xbox 360, the Kinect camera, that is connected to another program on a, normally a tablet that they can carry around with them. And what it does is the camera sends out a grid, reads that grid, and determines um, humanoid figures or what it perceives as humanoid figures within that grid one of those things it's yes it's very interesting um but there's nothing with it that that makes me believe absolutely everything i'm seeing with it because i've seen these things pointed at trees and it forms the outline of a person that doesn't necessarily mean that there's an ent entity there it sees something within its grid that makes it think it's humanoid, so it will map it out. But again, does it make an investigation more interesting? Absolutely. Especially when you think you're seeing the map of a ghost standing right in front of you. Definitely going to make you more interested. Some other equipment that I will not put too much faith in is just about any app that you can download. Um, for many reasons, uh, your cell phones don't always have the proper 
equipment in order to do certain readings. Um, so therefore, when you have a spirit box on the phone or um, some sort of ovulus device on the phone, I put even less stock in, in those than I do the actual devices that were created for it. Um, and believe me, I've started seeing apps for everything from a ghost sweeper that tells you if there's ghosts nearby. There's, uh, there's other apps like the Ovulus, which will pick out words and throw them at you. Um, there's other... Other devices, or pfft. there's other apps that act kind of like the spirit box, but they take out the white noise, and so all you're hearing is the words being thrown. Again, all this equipment, I put even less stock in the apps than I do the other stuff that's actually built for the equipment. Now, I'm not saying any of these devices won't bring something to an investigation, but without another piece of equipment that backing it up, such as an EMF reader, uh, a photograph, or something else that can actually back these other equipment up, by themselves, I wouldn't really take them as evidence. Combine them with another piece of equipment, and it just kind of an additive to the other piece of equipment. They definitely make investigations more fun. Um, I've been on many investigations and I know sometimes they just get boring. There's not a whole lot going on. So you, you wait until you get home, start going over the equipment and your evidence and whatever you recorded. And that's when you start finding the interesting stuff. You know, the EVPs or maybe a, a figure that you didn't see in a, a picture, but you see it later when you got home and look at your equipment. But if you want to get down to the basics, the only tools that you really needed, according to the founder of ASAP, Rick Moran, was a notebook and a pencil. You can sit in a dark room and just read off of from your feelings like, you know, does it feel like I've been touched? Can you tell the difference in the temperature? Um, do I feel like I'm being drained? Do I, you know, have you seen anything? Can you hear anything? Can Does the smell change? There's so many senses within the human body that can pick up on these things. All it takes is actually monitoring them, writing them down, and if there's some form of consistency between a couple of different investigators it holds some weight the newer equipment that really helps out with stuff like this would be a simple voice recorder a camera pretty much the main three things you need to be an investigator you don't need all this fancy equipment it's fun. It makes an investigation a lot more interesting, but you don't need it. If you're going to do investigations at your own house, I guarantee you, your cell phone, you can download a voice recorder app and that will work. Okay. But when it comes to these ghost apps, don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. Stick to the basics. If you like today's video, please hit the like buttons. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. If you want to leave a comment down below, please do so. And if you or anybody in your family feels like you need ASAP to come out and investigate something, you want to donate to ASAP, or if you want to become a member of ASAP, please check out our website at www.asupinc.org. Thanks and have a good one, guys.